Yeah, I'm ready. Oh, are you ready? Yes, you're ready because you're already here. Uh, hello, this is another episode of T4 Teachers. Wow, we're getting through quite a few. Thank you for watching um, T4 Teachers on Facebook. Uh, we put them together, we bunch them up, and we put them on our YouTube channel, uh, which is called What's English. Um, so if you've missed any episodes and you don't want to go all the way through Facebook, you can find them there. Uh, so this is the time we can sit down, uh, I can uh, give my thoughts and feelings um, based on some of your questions, and uh, we can move forward with teaching English to young learners. My name Steve Watts. I've been teaching kids for over 15 years. Let's dive into a question. We have a question here from uh, Harun Iyaz. Hello to you. Hi. You say, I'm here in China. Uh, so if you're in China, um, just ignore everything I said about YouTube. Um, I think it's difficult for you to get it there, but um, Facebook, I think you can. So uh, yes, you're teaching in uh, China. You're teaching uh, kindergarten children. Some of the students are really hard to control. They're very naughty, even if they have their parents around them for the whole lesson. Could you please suggest uh, a good way to involve and control them in some activities? Uh, as they are non-native English speakers, they can't understand uh, my instructions thoroughly. Okay, so uh, again, um, this is a multifaceted um, question. So let's just perhaps break down a little bit. I'll, I'll give one or two hints and tips. Um, I hope through our live streams there are um, some more detailed things about uh, discipline and control. We're coming on to that soon. Classroom management, etc. But uh, what I would say here is that um, from my experience, actually, when you have um, the children's parents in the class, the children are more disruptive and they're more difficult to control. So probably the biggest thing that I would say to you here is try to move the parents out of the classroom. Um, what's going to happen here is there's going to be a mix of the power base because the Parents are wanting their children to uh, have fun, to enjoy English, um, and of course they are um, the, um, the, the they're the people that the children look to uh, if they're misbehaving. But the parents often then sit back and say, "Well." I'm not going to discipline my child in the classroom because that is your job, that's the teacher's job. So we're starting to have a conflict here within the classroom. The children don't really know who is in charge, who is in control. And in a classroom, it must be you. You are the teacher, you, are, uh, you should be in control of the class. Um, sometimes it's quite difficult to move the parents out of the classroom. Um, perhaps if you're, as you say, you're teaching kindergarten, so the children might be very worried and upset if the parent is not there. Perhaps what we can do is you've started with the children in the, uh, with the parents in the classroom, so maybe move them to the door so that they can um, sit by the door or stay by the door. So we started just to move them a little bit, and the parent and the children say, "Okay, yeah, my mummy and my daddy is still here. Um, I'm not so afraid. I'm not so worried." Then perhaps we can move them just outside the door, but keep the door open. So again, we're just going to that little next stage where we're moving the parents out of the classroom. Uh, then, of course, you can have the parents sitting outside the classroom and close the door. So, any problems? Well, okay, yes, look, mummy and daddy are still there, that's fine. Um, so, close the door or move the parents um, to one side so that when you look at the open door, you can't immediately see the parents. I think this is going to be uh, quite a big thing and I think it will really change the dynamic of the class for you. Um, so, my biggest uh, tip here is even at kindergarten, work towards moving the parent out of the classroom. Um, it's going to get rid of any, uh, any of those issues because, again, as I said, the child will be looking to the parent to say, well, have I done anything wrong? Um, and if the parent isn't then disciplining the child in the class, they say, well, it must be okay. But the parent is thinking, well, I, I can't get involved because, you know, I can't discipline my child 
in front of all the others and it's your job to do that. So I think this is a big conflict that is happening in your class here. Um, I made just a, a couple of other notes is that um, you did say that um, you're worried that because the children are non-native English speakers they won't understand your instructions. Um, they won't understand the language that you use but if you physically move them about, if you show and you demonstrate exactly what you want the children to do, they will understand the intent and uh, of course when you're using the language and you're repeating language stand in line as you move the children into line it will be a short time until they connect those two together and they will understand your instructions. I've given just only two uh, little hints there, little tips that I think could help you in that situation. Um, there's a lot more, obviously, um, but for now, that's it from me. Um, if you have any suggestions to, uh, to help our teacher in China there uh, with um, children that are very difficult to control, please put your hints and tips in the comment section below and we learn from each other. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Tea for Teachers. Um, if you have parents in your class, um, you know, tell me about your experience. And uh, you know, like I say, let's learn from each other. Take care. See you next time. Bye for now. Hello. If you care, please like and share. Thank you. Hello. It's time for Tea for Teachers. I've got green tea, delicious and healthy. I hope you've got a cup of tea ready. It's the time that we can spend together to go through uh, some questions and give you some hints and tips on teaching young children, uh, teaching English to young children. My name is Steve Watts. I've been doing just that for over 15 years. And thank you for joining me. Let's have a sip of tea and we'll get on with it. Mmm. Ooh, with cranberries. Okay, so, uh, right. I apologise if I get your name wrong, Minoti Biswas. I hope I've got your name correct there. Uh, you sent us a message on Messenger, Facebook Messenger. Uh, send us a direct message. Uh, just put T for Teachers and uh, we'll try to find it. Uh, your message was, how should I teach um, describing a person or describing a place? Any suitable help for grade six? Thank you. Um, Okay, I would uh, concentrate here on teaching some adjectives and teaching some comparatives. We do have a couple of things uh, that focus on that language. It's in the WOW Blue Book um, on YouTube. I think you can find it with the car racing. Um, I'm racing a car with Maggie. Maggie's car is faster than mine. I'm slower. It's this type of language that we can use. And I think realia is going to be your biggest friend here. Perhaps you can uh, show pictures of uh, different uh, buildings and you can say that this building is bigger, it's got more windows. So this is the language that's going to get the children communicating and talking about differences. So uh, good luck, have fun with that. Uh, it's great for mime as well. In the blue book, we talk about differences in terms of clowns. Uh, there's a, a fat clown, a tall clown, a short clown, a thin clown, a fast clown, a slow clown, and of course miming being a clown, being a slow clown, ha ha, is I hope going to be a fun and interesting way of using that language that then you can transport to describing different people and places. Thank you so much for your question on T for Teachers. Take care, have fun teaching kids, and I'll see you next time. Yay! Back with my delicious green tea. Oh, that's hot. Hello, if you care, please like and share. Thank you. It's time for me and you and a cup of tea to sit down and have our next episode of Tea for Teachers. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, my name's Steve Watts. I've been teaching kids for over 15 years uh, teaching English. So let's dive in to some of your questions. Okay, I'm going to jump into a message we had here from Vivian Centurion. Wow, what a fantastic name. I'm Steve Watts. That's a real boring name, to be honest with you, but Vivian Centurion, a uh, great name. Hi, uh, hello, teacher. <laughs> That's me. Do you have any ideas for teaching shapes? Um, when I'm teaching shapes, um, I think it's great uh, to get tactile, uh, to touch things, to find things around the classroom. You can uh, play the feely bag, put different uh, maybe wooden blocks into your bag, put the hand in and feel them and sort of try to describe them before you pull them out. Uh, a great game to play with this is perhaps run and draw if you're doing the 2D shapes, uh, such as of course a you know, triangle, square, uh, these sorts of things, uh, do run and draw. 
A great game uh, that I really had fun with um, teaching was um, tracing the shape on the backs uh, of the children. So of course you have one child here, one child here, turn around, this child will then trace a shape on the back and they either need to shout out what that shape is or run and draw it on the board or another TPR response. Um, uh, have I got any others that I'm just quickly thinking of? Uh, yes, uh, paper rip uh, is a great one. Uh, give the children a piece of paper and they have to try to rip out different shapes. Um, of course, we can focus too much on the sort of like the drawing and it's quite quick, but having to actually tear the shape, sometimes the shape goes wrong and you have a different shape. So we can teach the children to play with different shapes. Um, so, Villain Centurion, great name. I hope that was great advice. If you have any uh, games or suggestions, hints and tips for teaching shapes to children learning English, pop them in the comment section below. Thank you so much. Take care. Thanks for watching this episode of Tea for Teachers. Oh, no, don't delete.